Welcome back to the Menopause Movement Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Michelle Gordon. If you're watching the replay on Facebook or on YouTube, thanks so much for being a part of the menopause movement. Today on the podcast, we welcome Colleen Kohanic. And Colleen helps women over 50 start online businesses. Right now in this era of physical distancing due to COVID-19, furloughs and layoffs, new and novel ways of making money are almost a necessity and Colleen can help you get it done. Colleen is the founder of ScrappyFrontier.com and her mission is to help women of the typewriter generation become laptop entrepreneurs. She started her first successful online business after a layoff. It wasn't all roses, though. In fact, it proved to be months of agonizing learning curves, computer chaos, second guessing, and technology trauma. But she succeeded eventually. After figuring out the modern entrepreneurship game, Colleen started a second business, www.scrappyfrontier.com, to help other women achieve their dreams of starting a business without the months and months of learning curves, false starts, wrong buttons, head scratching, cursing, and technology overwhelm. She says, I believe every woman over 50 should have her own online business, and it shouldn't be an excruciating process to get there. It's our turn. And during the podcast, we talk about the easiest way to get started with an online business, how technology can be a hurdle, how many first timers put the cart before the horse when it comes to starting a business the importance of recognizing our genius and not assuming that everyone knows what we know, the real reason people will buy from you, the logistics of setting up a Facebook page and why it's so important, and stay to the end to find out the role permission plays for women, especially we women over 50. Now, at the end of the episode, make sure you visit drmichellegordon.com forward slash podcasts, where you can find the show notes plus the links to the books and resources mentioned in the episode. And if you enjoy the episode, make sure you subscribe to the podcast so that you're always the first to know when each episode is released. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. And thank you for all of the five-star reviews. And if you haven't left a review yet, please take the time to review the podcast. This helps more women find it and get the help they need during the disruption of menopause. No one should have to go it alone. Now, we've also created a free training to help our podcast listeners go from minnow misery, and you know, that's hot, sweaty, sleepless nights, irritable low mood, feeling like an alien has beamed down and taken control of your body, piling on weight and looking pregnant, or feeling like managing your menopause is a full-time job, to minnow mate, and that's a woman who's not bothered by symptoms, happy and content with life, even dropping weight and fitting into your pre-menopause clothes, among other things. To access the free video training, go to learn.menopausemovement.com forward slash start. And thanks so much for being a part of the menopause movement. Now let's get to Colleen. Colleen, welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. It's, you know, you help women over 50 start businesses, right? I do. I do. And thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So it's, it's really appropriate, you know, to talk about this now. And so again, you know, the, the quarantine kind of stay at home order has been issued for the nation through April 30th. And we, you know, I want to just encourage more, you know, more people stay home, wash your hands, wear a mask, do all those things. But now more than ever, getting online and building a business online is so, so, so important. And this is what you do. So let's just talk about that for a minute. It, yeah, it absolutely is. And of course, you know, I've been acknowledging what's happening in the world. I mean, you'd be silly not to, of course, sure. but it's on the one hand, it's awful. On the other hand, I also feel like I'm in a really great place to help people because starting a business online, I mean, I have so many reasons. I'm actually in the middle of writing an article right now for like, you know, why starting a business after 50 is about so much more than just the money. The money, of course, especially right now is very important. But, you know, I think there's so many more things to starting a business after 50, you know, that I could get into forever. But starting an online business, what's really great is it's so flexible to match whatever our lifestyle is. If you're nearing retirement, not retired, getting laid off, whatever it is, 
And the other great part of it is you can start an online business on just about anything. I mean, literally just about anything because of the internet, because of Zoom. I mean, look at us right here. I mean, we're on yeah. Zoom. We see each other. You can do everything from teaching somebody, you know, how to quilt to how to do accounting. It's it's just kind of crazy. So the opportunity is huge. And now people are home, of course. And what I've been encouraging people to do, what I find a lot of times is the tech part of starting a business is where people get tripped up. And I'm like, you got a lot of time on your hands right now. <laughs> we can tackle the tech part of it because we got the time to do it. So it is a fabulous time, pandemic or not. But I think just yeah. especially right now, people are home. People are tired of binging Netflix. I mean, it's like, you know, let's do something productive, right? right. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. mean, it's a really good opportunity to, you know, read those books that are sitting on the shelf that you haven't, you know, wanted to, that you, that you've wanted to read, but you haven't. I mean, there's, there's that, there's a lot of people that are, you know, getting back into baking and, and, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but I think that when, when you're talking about starting a business, right, one of the things that I think is, you know, you, you mentioned that tech is a real barrier to entry. And even with, you know, Zoom is easy and it's been amazing. My, my wife is an internist and she's really on the front line. She's got a bunch of people in the hospital and we transitioned her to Zoom for telehealth in a day. Fabulous. In a day, you know, and yeah. so nobody's coming to the office, everybody's getting tele telehealth. And then they're, you know, they also have a bunch of really, really sick people in the hospital. If we can do that with somebody who's, you know, I mean, obviously we still have an electronic medical record. I mean, all the, the backup stuff, but, sure. but in terms of, in terms of tech, I mean, you know, in, in my online business, I think that I found that, that, you know, understanding the tech, you know, how to do an email autoresponder. I mean, when you start thinking about like building a business online and then you start going through all the things, you know, you need, you need a Facebook page. You have to understand Facebook ads. You have to build a, a landing page. You have to understand how to communicate your message. I know that, that I was really naive when I started and I thought that all I had to do was just like put it out there and people would buy and amazingly, you know, it would sell. And that's very naive. I mean, and it was easy for me to start a surgical business because, you know, I went to school and then I learned how to be a surgeon. And then I, you know, I went and opened an office and I took call in the hospital and I, you know, lo and behold, build the insurance companies and they paid me, but conveying a message, you know, so, so I guess the question is, if I'm passionate about knitting and I want to teach other people how to knit or I'm passionate about crocheting and I want to teach other people how to crochet, passionate about cooking and I want to teach people how to bake the perfect pie or make the perfect you know, meal for their family, what is the best and easiest way to get started? <laughs> I love this question. I literally just had a, a Zoom call with my members yesterday. I have a membership program. And I was having an impromptu call and they started asking these questions that were super sophisticated, but I could tell they were also from a place that they really had no idea what the question meant. One of the challenges we have when we want to start a business, we go online and we start Googling, I want to start a business. Mm -hmm. Well, now all of a sudden you're pixeled and Google's got you and you start getting all this stuff coming at you. And you start going down rabbit hole after rabbit hole for all the things you need to do, have to do, all of those right. things. And it just gets overwhelming. Sure. So the simplest way to start, and by the way, our stories are similar. I was laid off, I guess about four years ago now. And I thought, I've had a really successful career. How hard can it be to start an online business? And about a weekend, I was like, holy heck. <laughs> I had no idea. I mean, I'll tell you, I've spent a lot of money trying to get my business going. And oh, yep. Yeah. And I've taken every course imaginable. But the yeah. bottom line is, it can be really simple. What I find very often with people who come into my membership is I call it the cart before the horse syndrome. They go back onto traditional like business. Oh, I need a brand. I need brand colors. I need a logo. I need, and I'm like, what is your business? Oh, I don't know yet. I'm like, that's yeah. called the cart before the horse. We got to figure out what you're doing first. Sure. And the really the easiest way to do it is have an idea. I want to teach people how to bake the perfect sourdough bread. I'm not a baker, so I'm just making this up and start a Facebook business page on that topic. Start driving people to that page so you can at least test your concept without 
you know, going down the rabbit hole of getting a website and getting this and getting that, you might mm -hmm. want to drop a few bucks, super simple Facebook ads to get people there. But, right, but don't boost posts. Don't, don't boost, boost any posts. Don't, yes, thank you. Never don't boost, boost a post. Yeah, that's really, really important. Yeah. Uh, don't boost simple a post. And, and, and I just, I just want to say that one of my mentors is James Wedmore, who uh -huh. is probably the most I've done authentic. his business by design. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably one of the most authentic online guys out there. You know, I've been to a, a lot of his events. You know, he's not always looking to pitch you. He just really is somebody who gives. And he has an opt-in right now, which is basically, you know, how to get first hundred perfect people. I mean, he doesn't call it that because that's Rachel Miller's night thing. She does a, yeah. a, paid, a paid challenge for a hundred perfect people, but, but, you know, get your first a hundred subscribers. That's really yeah. all you need to get your first hundred people who are really interested in what you have to say. And when you do that, you can start selling to them. And as long as you yeah. train the people that, you know, this is a business and we're going to offer mm -hmm. things to you. And that was the biggest thing for me when I first started was that I was giving away so much for free. And since I deal with menopause, and I'm a doctor, people think that I'm dealing with a medical condition and yeah, the insurance yeah. should cover it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and so, you know, I'm here to sell you that, you know, obviously I don't, I don't teach something where it's not something that we, we don't take insurance for this. I mean, this is an online, you know, business with a platform yeah, yeah, and we, yeah. we train people how to manage their menopause and, and mm -hmm. get free of it. And we have a course and a membership and, and a community and we have some, free, you know, obviously we have free trainings. I mean, that's, that's how we do it. The podcast is sure, free training sure. and, and, yeah. and, you know, that sort of thing. So, yeah, um, but I agree. I mean, the very first step with any new business and I'm the, the time you need to start building your audience is yesterday. And that's what I right. tell my women all the time is you've got to get an audience because not only can you start testing your idea, you can start testing your message. You can start having discovery calls to get to know them on a much deeper level. So then your messaging is better and your offers are correct. So the audience is number one. So you're going to want a Facebook page, run some ads to it, you know, get people there. Friends and family are not your customers. Let me say that. Yeah, Friends that's and family so true. are not your customers. They're going to tell you what they think you want to hear. So build the audience first. Get 100 people. Get 50 people. You know what I mean? And start getting something out there on Facebook. And then you know what? Sell something super simple, whether it's PDF ebook that you put on Gumroad, which is, it's a depository where you can sell like an ebook and they take payment mm -hmm. there. Easiest thing out there in the world. You don't have to have a massive account or anything like that. You could put it there and literally sell it through your Facebook page. Of course, then you want to get some type of freebie or opt-in so you can start collecting those people's email addresses. So you have a way to communicate directly with them. We should never rely on Facebook because we don't own that territory. Right. Yeah. That James Shramko, James Shramko has a whole, you know, series and I called own the racehorse. And I think if you go to superfastbusiness.com, I mean, he's great and you probably don't know him. He's, I really don't, popular. I don't know the he's name. really popular in Australia. He's been podcasting for 10 years. It's a great podcast. So if you want to get started with a business going to super fast business, the super fast business podcast, I really highly recommend because I mean, a lot of the people that have helped me really kind of grow have mm -hmm. come from, from his world and from J and from James Wedmore's world. And what I really love about him is that there's a whole bunch of really great resources. If you're just getting started mm -hmm. and you can't actually get into his program unless you've already made money. So, you know, you got to figure out, you know, how to make your first $10,000 before you can really get into his mm -hmm. program where you can work with him. But owning the racehorse is really important. And so we really have to think, you know, you and I do this, and so we know, you know, what this means, an email autoresponder and a, an opt-in and those sorts of things. But I think we have to really go to like what, you know, my audience may not know anything about this and right now they need money. And so, you know, I think we should really, you know, take, take a step back before we talk mm -hmm. about, you know, an email op autoresponder and an opt-in. I think we need to talk about like basics of building a business, like, like starting with you know, who your audience is or, mm -hmm. you know, how you want to talk to them. And, you know, we've all opted in for things and we've all got a thousand, you know, opt-ins just sitting, on our, you know, <laughs> yeah. Sitting on our, on our hard drive that we never yeah. look at. Yeah. And so, you know, I think, I mean, I've spent, I've spent the last two years, you know, studying messaging and, and how to really, you know, talk to an audience in a way that is persuasive. And, mm -hmm. you know, because at the end of the day, 
when you're doing something, you know, a, a business, when you're starting with a business, you have to look, you, you identify a need and you fill that need. Right. Yeah. And if you're not starting your business from a place of service, it's going to be really, really hard yeah. to get it going. You know, in the menopause movement course, you know, and the membership, the minnow mates, you know, what we do is, you know, we take women from minnow misery to minnow mate, you know, where they're able to leave all their symptoms behind and thrive through life. Right. And the biggest thing is, is that women need this. And yeah. conveying the fact that they need it. And I'm here just to guide them through so that they can learn and learning how to talk to women in that way. And so I guess let's assume that, you know, I'm coming to you as somebody who has never done any of this. Uh huh. What's the very Which, first? That's my audience. That is my audience. Yeah. So here is where I find my audience is most stuck. I came out of educational technology was my corporate gig in applied linguistics, but I used to teach people how to use, if you were in college, university, you use the products technology. And we had this saying, digital natives, digital immigrants. We as women over 50 are digital immigrants. We came to technology differently. Our brain is not wired to just hit the buttons and make things work because we had the typewriter and whiteout. And once you started committing things to paper, you were committed. So you, we want to know what the end result is. So we have to get over that hurdle. But where I start people is always on the Facebook page because I see all the stuckness and they want to learn every little bit and piece first and then start. And I'm like, no, the learning is going to come from the action. It's like when you're talking about messaging. And so you actually get a few people to start talking to you can't know if your messaging is on or not because you have right. nobody to reflect that back to you. So my suggestion is always start a Facebook page. It's free. You can have as many of them as you want. Facebook doesn't care. You can trial and error your sourdough baking idea. Get a few people there, start practicing the messaging. And that is where the learning is going to come from is the actual doing and it's risk-free at this point and then if you want to sell something very quick you can but for example I have a woman in my group now she was a financial advisor very successful she's come out she's she wants to teach women over 50 you know how to be financially educated and understand da 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 and she's she has a Facebook page and she's actually gotten a lot of people there and she's posting and posting and she'll come in the group and say nobody's engaging I'm like because you're not speaking in their language, you are speaking in financial advisor jargon, and your audience is a beginner that doesn't know what a dividend or rebalancing is. It would be like you coming in, starting talking about all this medical jargon. I'm like, we have to start talking to our audience first so we understand what they don't understand, because we as experts have what I always call the curse of the competent. You know your medical stuff because you're a doctor. She knows yeah. her financial stuff because she's a financial person, but you don't understand that the jargon you're using is like Greek to the rest of us. So get a Facebook page, start it, figure out how to launch a Facebook page. There's a gazillion tutorials, slap a name up there and just start putting content out there, getting people there and talking to them. Well, I think that it might be actually really helpful if for the women and, and men and anybody who's watching, if we were just to create on the video here, a Facebook page real quick. Totally. Totally. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Okay. So here I am and you can see my screen. This is my personal Facebook, you know, with people. Yep. So when I want to create a page, what do I do next? You simply go to your profile so you can click on your name there. So right here. Uh-huh. Click okay. on your picture, your name. All right. And then it's a little small for me. It's looking really small for me. Is it the three dots here? No, it should be. Sorry, I'm having a hard time really seeing it. You I should know. be able to go to, okay, in the blue line across the top of your screen. Right. The, right, the little arrow to the right of everything, the little black arrow to the right. Oh, here, right. Drop that it. down. Yep. And go to manage page. Manage pages. I have a bunch of pages. Yeah. Okay. Oh, look at that. Create, Create a, page. a page. If I am somebody who doesn't have any pages, does 
when you push this down, does it say, does it say create a page or? I'm not sure if it just says create a page or manage a page. It would say either one, but once you okay. get there, create a page. Great. All and right. Then, so yeah, you create a page and, and then, then you here, just click create a page. Create a page. Right, so let's go ahead and create a page. Okay. And then you would click choose business or brand. Mm-hmm. That's new. Yeah. And then you put all is. the information in or all if you the information want to become, and for page or if you want to become name, a public figure, you can do that too. You could do that as well. <laughs> yeah. For page name, here is my rule clear over clever. People try to get really clever, like with their page names. We want clear because we want to know when that page comes scrolling through my newsfeed, I want to know exactly what it is. So like bake sourdough bread. <laughs> That's the name right. of the page bake sourdough bread. Don't try to be clever. Like, you know, Susie's, you know, sourdough yeast company or what, you know, whatever it is, yeah. tell us what your page is about clear over clever. There can be 10 Facebook pages with the same exact name. So if there's one that already exists, you can still have the same name. I guess you can't put an exclamation. No, you Let's can't use any special. Okay. Yeah. All right. Category baking. I can't read what those are, but just, it, says, yes. it says there's a whole bunch of them. Bake, okay, just choose one of them. Sourdough, yeah. bread. It doesn't really, <laughs> yeah, baking yeah. or something. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, and then uh, don't show my address because I don't have one. And yeah. then you continue. Continue. And okay, so you have to put your address in, but that's good enough. And yeah, and, and hopefully so, that my team will be able to punch in. I've got a monitor where I've made things, you, you know, kind of, it's big for me, but small for anybody who's sharing the screen. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. And so, it is simple as that. You could you'll you can upload a cover image, which is the image across the top of a Facebook page, which is very easily creatable in Canva.com. Oh, Canva is a, really amazing. It's free. You can it. take your free images software, that are big and make them small. Free software yeah. for non-graphic designers. It'll give you the exact dimensions. You you can get a picture of a sourdough bread, put it up there. But then you want to start posting, you know, post your ideas, post some recipes, post why you like sourdough, why this kind of yeast, not that kind of yeast. And that's where it gets a little tricky when we're curse of the competent. You know how to bake sourdough bread. I have no idea. I don't even know about yeast. And so you have to, I always say to my audience, pretend you're explaining it to an eight-year-old. That's where you're going to get the detail yeah. of what you can post about. But once you get that going, you're going to start attracting some audience and you will quickly learn if nobody's engaging on your stuff, you got to change it up because nobody's yeah. engaging on it. Or yeah. if people start engaging and asking questions like, boom, you've hit a good topic. You can do more with that. But to me, it's about the action because we can study, we can learn, we can watch tutorials all day. But until we actually start talking to our customers do we really learn about messaging? And the messaging is everything in our business as we know. And once you get that going, your Facebook page, then you might have a few people say, oh my gosh, I wish I knew. And you're like, okay, well, there's an idea for a freebie or a lead magnet, which mm -hmm. is the document or thing of value that you'll create in exchange for somebody's email address. Yeah. And I mean, right now, I think what I want to say is that right now in the era of, you know, this pandemic, people want more than a download. People want, you know, something that is, you know, something valuable. That's what, that's what I love about what James Wedmore is doing, because he's actually giving you a course mm -hmm. that will get you your first hundred email yeah. you know, subscribers. Yeah. And I think it very much depends on your niche or topic. Sure. Like he, he helps people build businesses. Let's say yeah. if you help people do sourdough bread. You might have like a cheat sheet on the perfect starter kinds of yeast. I don't know what it, you know, what, what, well, you, know, you need a, for first, I mean, I actually used to bake. So oh, did you? Okay. For, for sourdough, you need a starter. You okay. So a, then a starter that you have to keep going. And so the, yeah, you know, a great the ways to create the perfect starter, Yeah, how to create a, you know, a perfect starter. So that could be a really great download. So it's really, it definitely needs to be something of value that people are going to give us an email address for. But what I like people to do is start with the Facebook page, start getting an audience, start figuring out your messaging. Mm -hmm. Then you'll probably have an idea for something of value that you can give to them in exchange for the email address. Then you can go learn 
how to use an email service provider, which is nothing more than a software that helps us collect email addresses and automate and send out emails automatically to our list. There are many of them. I always recommend my audience start with MailChimp. It's free. Mm. It's pretty simple. You know, not a big deal. Lots of tutorials and boom. Now you're starting to build a list. You have an audience and that's where the magic starts happening. And you still haven't created brand colors necessarily. You still haven't necessarily picked a final business name necessarily. You're just kind of selling one little thing or one little idea to start with and keep it that simple. The thing is, is that it's easy for anybody who wants to start a business to be led by their nose. Like, oh, this is, this looks really good. Let me follow this one. And this looks really good. And let me follow that one. And the thing is, is to stick with one thing until it starts to what we call convert. So till people start to buy and when they start to buy, then you want to call them up and you want to say, Hey, tell me why you bought, because then you're going to get all the copy that you need. It's going to come straight from your audience. You just call them up and say, Hey, I'd really like to talk to you about why you bought. And you also can say, you know, when you, especially after you get a few emails, you say, tell me why you didn't buy. Yeah. You know, and and it's perfectly fine, but you know, and, and oftentimes it's price. I mean, the the biggest objection is price. People don't want to part with their money and that's understandable. And and, you know, you, that's, that's a difficult obstacle to overcome. But at the end of the day, when, you know, when you can get beyond the price and say, you know, if, if price were not an object, tell me why you wouldn't buy. Yeah. When I have people, when I recommend that my members say that they have their Facebook page or they have a few customers ask them if you can do a quote discovery call. Hey, I just want to chat with you about my idea. You know, tell me more about what you need around this topic, et cetera. I recommend at the beginning, they never ask about price because in the very beginning, we haven't even figured out yet how to communicate the value of what we do. And so it's not our customer's responsibility to tell us the price. It's going to be our responsibility to figure out the value of it and how to communicate that. In the beginning. Now, if you start trying to sell an actual product or service and you're getting a lot of no's, then it might be a fair question. But in the beginning, until we even know what it is we're offering, then we it's not fair to ask our customer to place a value or price on it because it takes a while also to understand what it is we're really offering. Because we think it's like, oh, I'm selling, you know a course on how to bake sourdough bread, but really if there's much more to it, it's, I want to get back into the kitchen. I want to share time with my kids. I, you know, want to learn how to do this thing that my grandma did because it's a great memory. So there's a lot more to what we're actually offering than just the thing really. And we kind of get caught up in that trap sometimes. I think that one of the things that we we have to think about, and especially when it comes to messaging, so how we speak to our audiences, and this is something that I have recently learned, and it has helped me a lot in terms of being able to communicate the value of what we offer in the menopause movement for, for the women who choose to leave their mental misery behind, and that is the ripple effect. Mm-hmm. How, how are things going to change in your life? And in my program, what has happened is that, you know, I don't really teach weight loss, right? That's not, but, but that's what happens. Mm-hmm. So, you know, as the women go through the program and start to understand the, the four pillars of, of the program, then, you know, we see 30, 40, 50 pound weight loss over a series of months mm-hmm. because they finally start to understand they get, they stop hating themselves. I mean, that's, that's one of the biggest things is that the w- women in menopause, they, they start to change, you know, everything changes. They don't recognize themselves. And then it's like looking in the mirror and, and I went through this, right. I looked in the mirror yeah. every time I looked in the mirror, I'm like, you're so fat. I hate you. And, yeah. and, yeah. and kind of yeah. getting to the point of understanding that, that I don't have to hate myself, mm-hmm. you know, and as a matter of fact, by hating myself, I'm really not, doing the things I need to do to sure. start loving myself. And You're so just adding to the problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you make such an important point. You know, we don't sell the thing. People don't buy the thing. People buy the result or the transformation is what they actually buy. So if you, I help women start their first business after 50, that's what I sell. 
I am selling a transformation from, I really want a business. I have a dream. I have a skill that I want to share. And now I can get here. I'm proud. I have a sense of purpose. I'm making money. So it's the transformation. And that's exactly what you're doing. So I think we need to remember that even if it's something like, say you hand make beautiful jewelry, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. it's hard to say what's the pain point of your customer. Like they want nice jewelry. Okay. Right. But The truth is what they want is they want to have something that people say, oh my gosh, where did you get that? It's so unique. So it's kind of a status thing, you know, when you get into psychology. So there's always a reason that's a transformation. It's not the actual thing that they want. It's the result that they want. Definitely. That's so, you know, marketing story. People don't want the drill. They want the quarter inch hole in their wall. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah, kind of a famous sure. marketing quote. They don't want the yes. drill. They want the hole, but yeah. You know, like the transformation of somebody who, you know, is teaching sourdough bread baking. It, actually sourdough bread baking is not easy. So if you are somebody who can bake sourdough bread, there is a ton of people at home right now who are wanting to learn how to bake and you could actually start a business just teaching on zoom or teaching on Facebook live. 100%. You, know, you don't even have to pay for zoom or you don't even, I mean, zoom has a free account, but you could just do it on Facebook live and just say, you know, come into this, you know, and I'm going to do this course and, you know, send me a Venmo, you know, and, send me a Venmo or just have a quick yeah. PayPal business account. That's yeah. free. Yeah. Yeah. Barrier to entry is so low. And back in the early days when I was trying to get online back in, I would say 2009, and there was like, I had to learn all this HTML code and, yeah. and all the, you know, trying to understand that. And I was like, this is too hard. I I'm, I'm good at yeah. surgery. And, you know, and then I came back again in 2016 and I was like, wow, it's a little, it's a lot easier. Yeah. There's so you many know, tools things. now. We don't have to yeah. be coders. We don't have to be techies. There's so many easy tools now. The, the barrier to entry is really low. I really find Here's another thing I find with my audience that I've written about a lot is we focus on the wrong thing. We focus on the tech. We think, oh my gosh, I can never start a business because of the tech. But here's the real deal is you're focused on the wrong thing. As women over 50, we are so suited to entrepreneurship. Like we are totally badass suited to entrepreneurship just from life. You know, we have patience, we have resilience, we know how to budget, we've been adults for a long time, all these things that are so important to quote entrepreneurship. And the tech part is just a skill. I'm like, you learned how to drive a car. You can, yeah. you can learn this part. But you that is such an effective reframe. Yeah, yeah, you can't buy that. You have that, that really the primary thing that you need. You have the expertise. Right. Now you just need to get it online. I mean, that's so great. You know, and a while ago I did a podcast with Demi Stevens, who is, she she helps women and men. She helps people one-on-one to get their book written and published. Mm -hmm. And right now is a time where, you know, if you've always had that book inside of you and you're ready to do it, you know, you're, you're sitting at home, you can't really go anywhere. It's not safe. And so, you know, Demi is I'm sure available to, to help you, but there's, you know, just thinking about the fact that, that we have the experience, you know, I mean, I've talked a lot about my life and how I was, you know, was really abused as a child and I had to overcome all of that to get to where I am now. And, you know, even when, when I did the TV show and I had to like accept the fact that I, my body wasn't where I wanted it to be. And I had to tell myself, well, people look like they look on TV. They look like they look. And yeah you know, and that's how you look. And, and, you know, I've watched so many people who like, can't look at themselves on a, on, on a screen or whatever. And I, you know, I don't like looking at my videos either, but at the same time, I'm not going to let how I look hold me back. Stop you. No, and so yeah. there is a lot of fear around being in front of a camera and just like anything else, like you said, it's a skill. And so we have overcome so many obstacles and mm-hmm. we're going to get through this COVID thing, you know, and we're going to come out the other side. It's going to be a huge snapback. And those people who are online and have gotten things set up are, are going to have, you know, because nobody's going to go back to not being online. I mean, we're online now and people are more, you know, yeah. more and more people are online and that's going to be where we're going to find, you know, most businesses. So and, and I don't even want to say if you've had an experience because we've all had experience and we all have something to share that, you know, can like, I've got, a, I'm thinking of a friend of mine who I grew up with is always posting about the cake she's baking. Mm-hmm. Right. And I don't know if she's a podcast subscriber or not, but, you know, I'm thinking about her and, and thinking, you know, you could really start teaching people how to 
bake and decorate cakes and and there's a business or people who like yep. to play guitar you know you can start teaching people how to play guitar one on one just through zoom totally totally and the thing about entrepreneurship is it, it, you know there's all those people out there that sell oh it's passive income it's easy money it's and we we those of us in there are like no it's not easy i have this article i'm talking about that i'm writing it's like i think it's 81 reasons why women over 50 make better entrepreneurs and the opening line is move over millennials but the challenge is we don't see ourselves out there. We see Forbes like 30 under 30 top, you know, entrepreneurs, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, where's the 50 over 50? It's making me crazy because we've already experienced so much in our lives that have taught us like persistence, resilience, patience, how to manage money, how to get through tough times. We've been there, done it. We've survived. We know how to hunker down and work. We know how to learn. We know we just life experience, it doesn't matter what your background is career-wise or whatever, just life experience itself yeah. has given us those skills for entrepreneurship. The tech part is just like the simplest part of it. And I do a lot of step-by-step -step training. And once I do it, the people are like, oh, was that it? I'm like, yeah, that was it. That was it. Yeah. Because they've kind of built it up in their mind, but it's not. But the, the experience that we bring and the enthusiasm and the cha another challenge I find is we overlook our skills because yeah. we've had them for so long. They're just a part of our life. We don't, we no longer recognize them as skills. So the fact that you can bake like some amazing sourdough bread, that is a skill. You might not recognize it because you do it every Sunday, but that is a huge skill. And it doesn't just have to be baking, but it could be you know, I tell people like, if you've been the one to organize your family reunion every five years, because you're so great at that, I'm like, that's a skill. Yeah. And just because you do it every five years doesn't diminish the fact that it requires a lot of skills. So I, we forget to, are we, we no longer see our own skills often. So I think, you know, we need to open that up as well and kind of really look. Yeah. One way that you can, if you are really seriously considering doing a business, one of the things that you can do is look at what people come to you for help on. Yep. And my byline for my whole life has been, I fix things. Mm -hmm. Whatever's broken, I can usually fix it. Uh -huh. And I'll take stuff apart and put it back together. And, you know, I've just got that kind of a mind, you know, and then I became a surgeon <laughs> where it's like kind of an <laughs> ultimate, ultimate fixer, yeah. right? Uh, we're the mechanics of the body. And so that, you know, I used to, you know, I used to build my computers, I used to take them apart and put them back together. And, you know, I've always been a tinkerer. And so that's been something. And, and then as I've moved on in my own life, my own spiritual journey, you know, my, my calling has been to be, you know, help, help women really find who they are through mm -hmm. this change, because it is an abrupt change that we don't expect. And, you know, the emotional toll that menopause takes on us, you know, we were told to expect weirdness during puberty, but nobody ever said that we were going to expect, so, you know, there's going to be a lot of changes in menopause. And so, yeah. mm -hmm. and so with that change, you know, as we start to get, get to know ourselves and start to kind of walk into our deeper purpose, a lot of us will, you know, start businesses or, you know, start a new hobby or something that, that helps to give us more meaning or, mm -hmm. or take a chance on something. Yeah. That's where this can come in. So I wanted to ask you a I question. Have, I, oh, I, I did read starting a business is probably one of the biggest self-help <laughs> activities you'll ever participate in because yeah. once you get in it, you really have to dig deep. Like you've got to find the self-discipline to get in front of the computer. And yeah, it's, it really becomes a self-awareness learning experience as well. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you a question. You said at the beginning that you were a linguistics, was it linguistics that you had? Yeah. You were in? I, I worked in international business and as an applied linguistic. Yeah. Applied so, linguistic. so does that mean that you studied Bandler and, and all those guys who, yes. were, you know, and Ericsson? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Basically how we learn language, which is just incredibly you know, my husband was from Germany. I've lived abroad. I went to university abroad. I've always loved languages. But when you get into the how we learn language and this whole concept of universal language, which every human is born with the ability to learn language, it's just it's just fascinating. I could go on and on about that's that. really great. Yeah. You know, because I've been reading Dilts. Have you read Dilts? No, I don't know that name. Robert Dilts. This is really kind of advanced messaging stuff, but Robert Dilts 
what he did was he, Richard Bandler would never lost an argument. So mm-hmm. Richard, for, for the audience, Richard Bandler started neuro-linguistic programming. And if you know yeah. who Tony Robbins is, Tony Robbins helps people change by using neuro-linguistic programming in his programs. And so if you watch his documentary, I Am Not Your Guru on Netflix, you'll see neuro-linguistic programming in action. Yep. It was Bandler and somebody else, I don't remember, but never lost an argument. And so what Diltz did was he analyzed this and turned it into 14 or 16, depending, patterns of language and Mm -hmm. how we shape beliefs. And oh, we can, words you know, are everything. Oh, words, words are, words are really important. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, and I like to say, and I say this all the time that, that, you know, everything in our minds is, you know, it's a belief and it's a belief that we may have formed when we were five, like I did, like I had to make, you know, I had a five-year, my five-year-old self heard my mom say something and my five-year-old self made a decision that the only way I could make money was to become a doctor. Mm-hmm. And, and so yeah. I'm a doctor because of that, you know, and yeah. now obviously I don't have that belief anymore. And, and, sure. you know, I still, I, I mean, I'll be a doctor forever, but I don't have, I don't have to do that. Right. Yes. To make money. Uh-huh. And so there's, everything is belief. And one of the things is that, you know, if you have a belief that you can't start an online business, really examine that because it doesn't take, if I could do it, I think anybody could do it. And, and yeah, I mean, it takes some perseverance. I mean, if it was super easy, everyone would be doing it. Don't forget yeah. that. Yeah. And you're not going to sit in your comfort zone. You're not going to sit in, you've got to get out of your comfort zone. <laughs> but, you know, I've had people say to me, I will go on Facebook live over my dead body. And two months later, there they are in Facebook live. And I'm like, and look at that. <laughs> you're alive. Yeah. You know, it's you just know, a matter of, I'm very much a straight talker with my audience. I have these, it's kind of cr- these silly little finger puppets. I call them my tough love monsters. And I'll pull them out and be like, oh, I could never go live on video. I'm like, suck it up, buttercup hit the live button. I bet the sun still comes up tomorrow. Just do it. Because once they do it once, it's like, oh, and I'm like, it's kind of like the first time you got in the car behind the wheel, turned it on and hit the gas. You were, I mean, we all survived that. So I think it's, you know, I'm much more of a straight talker that you're not going to be in your comfort zone, but you have already survived so much more than that. And we all have something to share. We all have skills that people need. They need you. They need what you have to offer. And so that's what we have to believe in. Because as you said, what is that quote? Whether you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right. You're right. Yeah, that's true. And you know, when when you want to do something, you know, the only time you're ever going to have some growth, and if you look back at your life and see that every time you did something that scared you, that that took you right outside of that box, you know, that box that we Mm -hmm. create with our beliefs. Like I can't do it. And then you try and you actually do it every time you do that, then your confidence gets better. Absolutely. And so when it comes to building anything, you know, or making any sort of a change, what I like to tell people is what is the next smallest step? And then I, this, this came from Ryan Levesque, so I won't, I won't, I won't take credit for it, but what is this next smallest step I can take that'll move me closer to my goal? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you look at it that way, when you can keep a goal in mind and you have your goal written down and then every day you say, okay, this is my goal. And then what is one step I can take today that'll take me closer to that? You know, there's all the things, all the things that have to happen in order Mm -hmm. for us to, you know, be successful and make an online business. But at the end of the day, you don't have to do that. All you have to do is one thing. One more thing. Yeah. Just yeah. one thing today and yeah. then one thing, you know, and yeah. one thing and one thing. Yeah. And I also I really believe like- in managing expectations because people are like, well, I'm going to be so bad at it. I'm like, yeah, you're yeah. going to suck yeah. the first few times. Yep. Oh, we're anything that's you're worth doing is it. worth doing badly. Yeah, anything I mean, worth doing is worth doing badly. Yeah. And I told so- my brother, I told my brother the other day, I said, you know, he's, he's studying change leadership, change organization, and he's getting a PhD. And I said, listen, I said, You've got skills that people need. I said, get it out there badly and, and then you can perfect it. Totally. I go back uh-huh. and look at some of my first Facebook lives and I'm like, oh. seriously, Colleen, like, and you left them up there. I'm like, I'm leaving them yeah. up there. <laughs> yeah. I went, like, I did a, I did a Facebook live every day for like eight months uh-huh. and and every like, day. And then I went down it. to five days a week and now then yeah. I started the podcast and now yeah. it's like when, once I go face on Facebook live, I'm, I'm live on my Facebook page on Mondays at 8am. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I script those now. I mean, I write but those out. I think out. we need permission. At least I find my audience often, they want permission. Like I will say, come into the group, do a Facebook live. You have permission to do it. 
be as, you know, be bad, have the sound not work, have the lighting bad, you know, forget what you're going to say. You have total permission to come in and let us just help you. Like you have yeah. permission to be a beginner. I mean, so I, I want to talk for a second about permission. And I, I do talk about permission quite a bit because we're women living in a patriarchal society. And for whatever reason, there's a book I, I recommend almost every podcast I want to say, and it's called The Alphabet Versus the Goddess. And it's Ooh, a great, oh, it's a it great yeah. book about the patriarchy and the rise of the patriarchy and how it started. And it was written by a surgeon, actually. And it's the best religious history book I've ever read. And I don't know that if he intended it to be that way. On the last time, I think when I spoke to Deirdre Fay, I said that it was us, the use of language, so written language, started us using the other side of our brain. And so we were completely right-brained. And I think I said on the last podcast, I said it was the left brain. So I apologize for that. I was wrong. And then as we started using written language, we started moving over to the, to the left brain. So mm -hmm. right brain is for creativity and empathy and all of these things and all gods were female. All right. And then we have written language start and the male gods start massacring the female gods and they become, mm -hmm. you know, the mound of this hill over here and, and the female gods are gone and it's all male gods. Right. And so through that, women have been taught. And I remember, man, growing up, I mean, I was born in 1964, I'm 55 years old and I had three brothers and my dad and then my mom. And it was always anything they wanted to do, they got right. We had a male God and, and I had all these men in my life. And, and then I, of course, then I had the whole confusion of being the sexual object of men on top of that. And so, so the point of my story is that, you know, I didn't see any female at all because I didn't, I mm -hmm. was never, it was never modeled for me. And so I was completely masculine, completely masculine, completely masculine. And then there was always this thing about women have to ask for permission. We so, permission. you know, for mm -hmm. any, but, but we don't. So, no, so the no, point is, is this, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but you we, don't. Yeah. And, and so what, that's a belief that we have and it's ingrained in us. It's like a societal belief. And so if you are somebody who's waiting for permission, I'm giving it to you. You totally. have permission. Go you have start permission. your business. Do what Go you want to do. Go and do think it. about where your passion is right now. Because yeah. at the end of the day, we don't have to wait for permission. All we have to do is, is start. And it's going to be uncomfortable and it's going to feel awkward and messy and that's okay. But if you need a guide to get started with your business, you can go to Colleen. I would love to help that. you out. And what I would, I, what I love seeing is there is this patriarchy and there is sexism and there's age, there's all of this stuff. Yeah. But what I'm seeing is this huge movement. I mean, I see it in my own membership program, these women coming in. And when I read between the lines, it's like this, I've been a good girl my whole life. I've done exactly what I've been told. I've done what I'm supposed to do. I've been a good girl. I've been a good wife. I've been a good sister. I've been a good, I, you know, I was in the PTA. I took care of the community. I took care of the house. I did, you know what? It's my effing turn now. And I'm seeing uh, more of that, which I love. That's great. I that's love. great. Yeah. Where can people find you? They can find me at scrappyfrontier.com. Scrappyfrontier.com. All yes. right. Yes. And actually the name, I was working for a, a large corporation. My office was in London. It was a global team. And there were two Americans on this team. And this is nothing against the Brits, but there was this older executive male. And we were doing like a year end review on sales or whatever. And this other American woman and I had come in and we were the only ones that had made goal anyhow for the year. And we were talking about something and he looked at us and he said, you two are scrappy. And he meant it like, sit down and shut up. And we were like, hell yeah, we are. <laughs> we got it done. <laughs> so that's where the name kind of came from. I love it. We are so resourceful. You know, if you've hit 50 or beyond, we're so resourceful. We have so much going for us. Sometimes we don't see it ourselves, but it's, it's there. It is absolutely there. So yeah, scrappyfrontier.com. And, you know, I start you from the very beginning, from the very yeah. beginning. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, thanks so much for coming on the podcast today. And hopefully, you know, if there's some, some questions, we can bring you back with, you know, with questions. I'd love to. I'd love to. Thanks right. so much for having me. All right. Now's the time, ladies. So get going. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Menopause Movement Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Michelle Gordon, and I wanted to take a moment to share what one of our community members has achieved since she's been working with me. Amanda has had an amazing transformation. 
Amanda was struggling with joint pain, hot flashes, forgetfulness, sleeplessness, weight gain, and an angry mood. In addition, she lost her confidence and self-worth as menopause crept up on her. Since joining the Menopause Movement membership, Amanda's quality of life has improved in ways no one could have predicted. She has truly transcended the symptoms of menopause and is now living her best life. This is what I want for everyone in the community. Take a listen to Amanda's story. I just want to show you what's possible when you join the community and do the work. Transcendence is available for you, too. Now here's Amanda. Hi, my name is Amanda. I am 54 years old and I live in the UK. At this moment in time, I'm in a fairly good place in my life. Recently, I've lost 18 pounds and I feel healthier and more content than I have done in a long time. However, it hasn't always been this way. Back in October 2011, I had an accident which resulted in a serious injury and surgery and subsequently changed my life forever. And over the next few years during my recovery, Menopause crept up on me, but I didn't realise what was happening straight away. I started suffering from more joint pain. I went from always being cold to feeling like I was going to internally combust several times a day. I was getting really forgetful. My sleep pattern was terrible. I piled the weight on and looked pregnant and I felt angry all the time. When things were at their worst, I felt incredibly alone and very down. I lost my confidence and self-worth and I felt completely misunderstood and confused about what was happening to me. I received very little support or information from my GP and there was limited information on the internet, but what I really wanted and needed was someone to talk to. The turning point for me was at the beginning of July 2019, when completely by accident, I came across Dr Michelle Gordon's Facebook page on the menopause movement. At that time, she was doing daily live streams and I started listening to them. I related to a lot of what she was saying and I was really interested in the variety of topics about menopause that she was talking about, the alternative ways to manage menopause symptoms in a more natural way and how your mindset is the key factor to transforming your life more positively. I was also really interested to listen to the other ladies in the group and what they had to say. Ladies who had been or were still suffering from similar symptoms to me. How a lot of them have been able to manage their symptoms much better and how they have turned their lives around and embraced menopause instead of treating it like a demon. Although nervous about taking a risk to join a group I didn't know, I knew that I couldn't and didn't want to carry on living my life the way I was and feeling the way I was feeling. So I made a decision that I too wanted to learn more about menopause how to manage my symptoms better, and most importantly, learn more about my mindset and the fact that I needed help with changing my outlook on life in order for me to get it back. Life is nowhere near perfect, and some days I still have my struggles, but on the whole, I can honestly say that I am in a much better place than I have been for a long time, and for my down days, I understand better how to manage them so they don't get out of hand. I am now on a journey with a fantastic community of like-minded women, all of whom continue to support each other no matter where we all live, and I no longer feel confused, misunderstood, worthless or alone. For me, this group has been both a lifesaver and a life changer, and most importantly, the one-to-one private coaching sessions that are available with Dr Gordon as part of the membership have been invaluable to me. They provide me with an opportunity to discuss more difficult and private issues that I am struggling with, and an opportunity to find solutions to address them. Without doubt, I can wholeheartedly say that I owe Dr Gordon and her group everything for showing me how to take my life back and, more importantly, take control of it. Joining her membership has been the best thing that I have ever done. However, this course is not for everyone. If you're looking for a quick fix that doesn't cost you any time, money or effort, then this is not the group for you. But if you're in a similar situation to how I was not that long ago, feeling desperate and at the end of your tether, but are willing to invest in your own future happiness and peace of mind, but are unsure as to what to do, ask questions and talk to Dr Gordon. And if you choose to take that leap of faith, you won't regret it, because who wouldn't want to take their life back if they have the chance? If you are feeling like Amanda, you're not alone. There is help for you in the Menopause Movement membership. 
I want to help you transcend your symptoms and live your best life. To discover how you can become a part of this life-changing community, go to menopausemovement.com. 